Have you ever fallen out of love and stayed in a relationship anyway? Yes. Why? Because he was a nice guy. That nigga's dick game was whack. I can hurt. Oh my was. god! He was a nice guy. His name was Chad. And he was a really <laughs> swell man. <laughs> What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's the girl with the hoops and the slick bun. We are back with another episode of Soulful Conversations. I have a very special guest with me today. Kujo the side. Now for the people that don't know you, introduce yourself. Kujo Savage with a K. <laughs> Look me up. K-U-J-O underscore the savage on Instagram. Hit the link and you'll see all my shit. Yeah. Real spitter. Period. Not a basketball player. Not a football player either. <laughs> Are you into sports? Yeah. I like sports. Yeah, I'm, I'm very into sports. Uh, baseball is cool, kind of. I, I, I get into it, but like, I have to be there. You enjoy sure. going more to the games. Right, anyway. right. But no, with basketball, Lakers, football, Raiders. All day. All day. What would you say is your favorite sport? Basketball. Right. I used to play when I was younger. I wanted to play football. I was pretty good too, but my mom was like, no, 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 no. you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> my insurance isn't gonna cover that. <laughs> so your latest project. Dropped a couple months ago, right? Yes. Did you go? Mm -hmm. How many tracks is on that? I want to say like 10 or 11. 11. Underrated. Go look at it. Baby Go. Baby Go by Kuja the Savage. You like RB shit? There's a gang of that on there. Be on that hocus pocus trying to spell me out. Baby, can you hold this? Never let me down. I got two whips. I can actually need that. Baby, I got three phones. Better not repeat that. Take it like it's FIFA. Get on my seat. So when you started out doing music, did you go inside like strictly rap and then r&b came out well i mean like i never really wanted to be a rapper like, really yeah that wasn't my shit that's like a whole fucking story but i guess i get it <laughs> make uh, it short make it short so, <laughs> my two cousins right one one eric the other one leo me and leo and eric were all bad right eric always liked to write music me and Leo would always be on some like different like just running them up right mm -hmm. and then um one day it's actually a like, crazy story, and I, I told it like on other podcasts. Mm -hmm. I'll tell it here again. Um, this is how me, you came out to be. Yeah, this like the first day I started to write. I wrote a song was me and Neil were doing something we weren't supposed to in an alley, and we mm. took something that wasn't ours from somebody. Ran home, and my aunt was cooking like spaghetti or something, and Eric was right there. He was like writing something, and I was like, "Yeah, what are you doing? Homework." You know what I mean? Like, and then he was like, nah, for Mighty Ryan, because he did have his headphones on. I thought he had his headphones on and he was doing like homework or something, mm -hmm. you know? Because he was the better one at the time. He was like, nah, I'm Mighty Ryan. And I was like, nice. And I remember I was eating, and he was like right across from me like this. Huh. And I'm looking like, this fool really is right now. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, good for him. And then he, and I was like, hey, why do you do it? And I was like, fucking around with him. I said, how do you do it? I, said, I was like, my rapid. After that shit was tight. He was always better than me. Always. Like, my cousin was better than me. Like, he taught me how to rap. How old were you guys when this shit? I'm older yeah. than him. Or I was older than him. He passed away. But, so he was at the time probably like 15. I was probably like 17. Sorry about your loss, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. He rapped it for me. And that one was dope. And I was like, damn, I want to get like, I wish I could do that shit. Like, you know, that shit sounds tight. Like, he was like, well, just try it. And I was like, nah, I'm cool. Like, business i'll do that you know mm -hmm. and he was like no nah, fool try it please and i was like no nah, fool he's like come on fool for me try it like i would love to rap with someone like rap with me like he's telling me all kinds of shit mm -hmm. like you know we just try it fool like who cares how it sounds and i was like all right so he ripped out a paper whoosh, gave it to me got the pen i wrote the corniest shit you've ever heard <laughs> like, and i still remember how it goes too isn't that how you usually I started? still remember how it goes too. It was like Let's hear it. Some about Joe and Schmo and I went to the liquor store and I got a photo. Go off my, Dr. Seuss. And, yeah, I <laughs> stubbed my toe and it, it was like really embarrassing. But you know, he was he he, he was a supporter, so he was like, Yeah, she was tight, fool, like straight line. Like but like hey, but you know what? Like I'm glad he made me do it because what I fell in love with that day was the puzzle. For people who actually write music and do music, we, you don't, you don't understand what I'm saying, but if you don't write music, you probably won't get this, but, you know, within a bar, right, there's 16 bars in a verse, or it could be 12 bars, or even 8, right? Mm -hmm. Usually it's 16, 
back in the day, 90 shit, for sure, it was 16, 8, 16, 8, 16, 8. You know, nowadays, the new shit, it's 12, 8, 12, 8, 12. It could be whatever. Some fools still do 16, right? Mm -hmm. So, every, think of, like, every fuck Jungle Book, the bouncing ball. Like, every fucking line that you've seen across the, every subtitle is a bar. Okay, you guys see these sticks. So, within these two sticks, you can fit as many words as you want in this motherfucker. Or, you could put 20 words in here, or you could put five. Or you could be like... It all depends on your style and what you want to do. You just got to fit it into the line. And then the syllables got to make sense. And, the, and the, what you're saying it all has to make sense. It's, it, it's not easy to be, to be a lyricist and all that shit. You know what I mean? I in love with that. Started running a verse a day, a verse a day, different beats, different beats. Then it went to two verses a day. Then it went to three verses a day. Full songs with hooks. And at the time, I didn't have a studio. You remember the old iPhones have a voice memo. I used to click that shit. And I used to have uh, uh, my, my PS3 had YouTube. So I should look up a beat on my PS3 on my, on my TV, press it, I'd have that shit up, like ready to go, I'd press X, boom, and turn on, and i boop, and I'd be right here, side neck, reading something, like full blown on my lyrics, and, I, and if I, like it was like a one take thing, if I fucked up on the second verse, I had to, I had to pause it, delete that, start over, I have all the voice memos still, so to prove them, yeah. some of them I turned into songs, some of them I did, really? But that's how I would get my music out. And it got to um, other motherfuckers and shit. And my shit started ringing bells around the neighborhood and, and the harbor area. Like, man, like my, my voice me my voice memos. So. Mm -hmm. And that shit was cool. Like, we used to have battles at, like, in the, in the, in the hood. Like, mm -hmm. fucking people from, like, Redondo would come. People from, like, fucking Lomina. And, like, rappers and shit. Thinking they're all hard. Because, I mean, girls connect everyone, right? Yeah. So, like, I, I'd have a homie and he'd be like, oh, yeah, the homegirl. Or my girl right here. And she's bringing her homegirl. And then her man's coming, he says, he go rap, hey, Trouble, get on that fool. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, whatever, <laughs> like, he'll start rapping, whatever. And I was always humbled. Like, me, and, me and my cousin Eric were like, we'll tear your ass up. Oh, boy. Okay. With the lyrics. Like, you think, like, that's the thing. Like, people are like, man, Kujo, I love that you're a lyricist. And you're very, like, who do you think I learned that from, fool? Yeah. That fool taught me. That fool fucking showed me. Like, that fool showed me. Like, he taught me what a double entendre was. That's when you say one thing that has two meanings is a triple entendre. That means you're saying one line. That means three three meanings. And I'll use a perfect example I always use because it's, it's the first one that comes to head. Immortal Technique said, I believe it was him, said, I'll leave you full of clips like the moon blocking the sun. I'll leave you full of clips, but I'll leave you full eclipse. So I'll leave you full of clips. Like the moon blocking the sun. Bars. What if I was cocky? I said, left a square ass full of holes. Rest a piece of SpongeBob. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about a square motherfucker, but it's a double entendre. You know what yeah. I mean? But I fell in love with it. I really fell in love with the art. Like, I fell in love with improving. I wanted to be like. The best? I want Eminem to fear me. Like, or I want Eminem yeah. to be like co signing one day. Like, that's my successor, right? You know what I mean? Like, that was like my goal, goal, goal. I put a lot of, like, fucking. Hours, hours, sacrifices, blood, sweat, tears. You gotta get down over this shit sometimes. You do a song, motherfucker, that ain't, you know what I mean? The homies don't like and shit. You gotta catch phase over that shit. You gotta fucking, man, like, you gotta deal with all kinds of, like, and, and if, you, if you're if you Hispanic in this game and you know what I'm fucking talking about, you gotta deal with a lot of bullshit. You gotta deal with motherfuckers that you're cool with today, but tomorrow you might not be cool because of some dumb shit. Like, like whether it's jealousy, bitches, money, Cloud, like it's 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 it's, it's, it's with our people, it's real like wishy washy. You never yeah. know, so you gotta just always protect your neck, homie. You know what I mean? Something like that. Keep a, and even the squad you keep around, like you gotta make sure they're squad. Like yeah. in, in, in situations that happen, where were they? Where were they at? What were they doing? You know what I mean? That that's how you weed out. Would you say you got your circle down? I don't have a circle really. I just I just fuck Steve Diddy. That's my boy. And I fuck with um, you know, like actual family members and homies from the streets. I don't really have homies like really in the music industry like that. Like, you know, I have label mates like like my boy Bozo and shit. Like acquaintances, he, you yeah, say. yeah. But I, and I have love for him. I'll jump with him, uh -huh. but we don't kick it every day. Yeah, he, he'll tell you the same shit. Like, I got love for Cool Joe. That's my boy, label mate. Mm -hmm. I'm with him. If I'm there, it's on. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I can't just call the homie Bozo like, oh, I'm going to the show, and you know what I mean, back me up. Like, it's not like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you gotta have your own little shit. Like, and, and I've always been kind of a lone wolf, anyway. So, right. Like, me and my blamer, that's all I need. Like, if it's my time to die, it's my time to fucking die. But nowadays, it's really crazy. Straight too. up, you know. Like, you just never know. Every time you go to the show, you never know that might be your last show. Never shit. know.
that's just like gang banging. Yeah. Everybody's fucking beefing. Like it's just it is what it is. You know, the, the strong, strong-minded people collide. You know what I mean? Their minds yeah. collide, and it's always gonna be that way. I feel like it's a lot of alphas like trying to compete with each other. Everybody's trying to roll the world, right? Yeah. Hey, I'm just trying to make a change. That's the thing. Like everybody's doing this shit for the money, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and to feel like I feel like a lot of people do it to be recognized or whatever they. You know what I mean? But for me, like, like I just want to be remembered for fucking opening doors. Like, like when I die, I want a Nipsey kind of funeral. When I die, I want a Kobe kind of funeral. I don't care about being the best. The money's going to come. I don't care about the money. I've been broke my whole fucking life. I don't care. I write music. I do music because I love music. If I never make a dime off of it, I'm going to keep doing it. Like, when I die, I want I want people to be like, like, tap my fucking face on them and shit like that. Like, yeah. I want to be an influence to the next generation and the ones under me. That's our job, right? Right. Big homies, older homies tell me that. Like, they're preaching that, like, mm -hmm. as they should, you know what I mean? They're preaching the right word to my generation. Like, be something that they can look up to, you know what I mean? Like, like really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like be something, dog. Like, who the fuck's our Kobe right now? Yeah, for real. If you're a fucking young 15-year-old you're going to rap, who the fuck is our Kobe? Yeah. For real, for real. <laughs> consistently been doing it we don't have one like yeah. we have a bunch of homies doing their shit shout yeah. out to all of them right yeah. shout out to all of them righteous 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 you got g you got drummer you got the homie bozo you got motherfucking ybe you got uh i mean uh, this is just off the top of the fucking dome right you have a lot you got little rob little one conejo fucking a gang like a gang yeah you know what, you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that's all we really have to look up to right is right. that but you know, no disrespect to them, and I fucking respect the shit out of it. I want to go past that. Yeah, that's the fucking goal, right? Like, the fifteen-year-old kids watching this shit, you should want to be better than me, or fuck me, I ain't even shit. You should want to be better than fucking all the motherfuckers I just named. I don't know. I'm just trying to do my part. I'm just trying to do my part and the best of my abilities and do it right. And I want to be remembered for doing like, for like making a difference. You know, that's it. I guess that's what I want to say for making a real difference in in hip hop, hip hop as a Chicano. And I'm proud of being a Chicano rapper as well. Like to me, it's just it's the same shit. You know, speaking of huh? wanting to get past that, as a Chicano rapper, do you feel like there's a top that Chicanos hit that? You oh, can't of course. Get past? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's honestly, that's the fault. That's not our fault. Our generation. I really believe that that's the ones before us. I feel like they kind of fucking put a lid on us. Here's like an analogy, right? Before our generation, this this new generation came back, came up. I feel like we were already judged, homie, prejudged because of the ones before us. So it's like it's kind of like okay, me and you were gonna show up to a party, but I sent my two dumbass little homies before that, mm -hmm. and now they already don't like them. So now before we come, they already don't like us, you know, yeah. what I mean? or, or type shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying don't like, but I'm, it's kind of like that. Like they it. already thought that that's the best that we can do is the ones before us. I'm talking the 90s era, all that, all that shit. Like, to them, like, that's the top of what a, of what a Hispanic can do. Yeah. That's kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, they have a hit or two. Whatever. Nah, fool. We're like, we have motherfucking talent. Like, mm -hmm. from Texas to here to motherfucking wherever the fuck. Arizona, like, Nevada, fucking homies in Colorado, all kinds of shit. Like, like it's it, we're here now. You know what I'm saying? We're here. We're going to pass. We're gonna, I feel like we're really going to break the previous records that have been set. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you got Kid Frost. Technically, he's the one that's been in movies with the soundtrack and all that shit. But like, hey, fool, there's gonna be a homie to break that. Yeah, to get shout past out to Kid Frost though. Yeah, you're, you know, you're to some people you're a great, but hey, that's just gonna get broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, mm -hmm. like, we're here now. Yeah, and I think they know that and they don't know how to, ha how to handle that shit. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us to literally reinvent how the fuck we're gonna go about this. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need right. to really. I'm not. I'm not gonna preach that. We need to get together and we need like, yeah, we need unity. Yes, we do. We will be unstoppable, of course, but. I, you know what I'm saying? I ain't motherfucking Martin Luther King either. The more on the same page we are, the stronger we're going to be. And like I said, on the same page with the way we maneuver with labels and, the, you know, the way that they're going to perceive us when we pull up and we know our shit and, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shit like that. And then we work together because they don't want us at the motherfucking Grammys. They're afraid of that shit. Like, there's, yeah. there's motherfuckers that don't get invited to shit like that. Like, and I feel like we're that because they, they already prejudge us. They think we're going to fuck their party up or they think that we're going to fuck fucking ruin whatever fucking image that they think is gonna sell yeah but do you, you know think there's a there's a reality to that stereotype i mean yeah but i feel like we know how to act now you know what i'm saying like yeah. we want this we want a deal we got families to feed like like we're gonna act right you know what i'm saying like 
you give us a fucking opportunity, we're gonna make the most of it, and we're gonna be professional. We know how to be professional now. It's already that stigma that needs to get broken. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, and another thing is like the whole us doing songs with like you know black homies and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I'm seeing more of that shit. Yeah, right? the because, black and the brown. Yeah, because that's showing the big labels like, oh shit, their fools are cool now. Yeah. Like like hey, they're not the fucking. They're not that box that we threw in the back, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, we just need to keep doing it. But we need to start coming out with, with hitters and even even myself, man. Like, like we need to really come strong. We need to really come forceful and strong, and, and but like I said, correct and professional. You know what I mean? Conduct every... I feel like we're doing a great job, though, right yeah. now. I really do. I really feel like this new wave of what's, of what's happening is... I'm proud of it. The homies that are in front right now are doing their job, like, musically and shit. You know, I really want to see us at the Grammys and shows like that. We will. I feel like and hey, and if not, we'll make our own. We'll make our Call own. Call like BET. We'll make our own. <laughs> We're the cucarachas of the game. We're gonna get it one way or another. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. And there's no getting rid of us. There's no getting rid of us. A lot of the women are getting involved now. Back then, it was all men, really. Yeah. You no, know, other than that one hyena, fucking lighter shade of brown hyena. She was like really the only one. They were like, the you know, you know, you know, I think it was uh, Miss Sancho. Miss like, Sancho. Yeah. Now you got all kinds of girls. You got Reverie. You got Gavlin. You got motherfucking Belle. You, Jamie. So that's another beautiful thing. Is like you know I feel like we're getting more girls. In yeah, the like it's really becoming more like united in a way. Like I don't want to sound choopy, but it's really becoming <laughs> more like like together as it should. We're powerful that way. I'm sure you're working on new shit right now. You know I'm working on new shit. That's something for good. I know you did. Hey, she got that good too. Yeah, yeah I'm like. Fuck, that shit needs to drop. Y'all don't even know. Like, you're real professional with your shit. Like you said, you're a chess player. Mm -hmm. You're taking your time with it. You know, a lot of people rush. Right. And I feel like if I had the features you had, I would at least, you know, like post Start about it. One. Yeah, like at least post one, drop one. Do you feel like there's gonna be like the moment or the perfect time to drop that shit? Like, why are you holding out, man? <laughs> hey, when I come, you won't feel me. But you know what? Um, yeah, I like to work. I like to, um, and, 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 and you know, it's keeping crazy. Like my my label pushes so hard, they'll even tell me like you're slacking. Woo -doo -woo -woo -woo. Like you, you should be doing it. I'm like, motherfucker, I have three albums done, bro. Like, like you know what I'm saying? But hey, that we're just we all work. Like Steve is like more, 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 more. Yeah. Like big time. Like that fool pushes me a lot. You know what I mean? But man, hey, you know what? We're actually hiring videographers. Producers, engineers, all that stuff. We have ours, but you know what? We're we're trying to build the team straight up. You know what I'm saying? So anybody who's interested, you see this, hit us up. I'm not even just saying this to speak out of my ass, but the shit you showed me, uh, I'm honored you showed me that shit. I mean, you're a music lover, you know what I mean? So I feel like That's you would true. appreciate it too. You know? Yeah. Like, no, I, I don't. For sure. I don't show this to anybody. You know what I mean? I probably get in trouble for Stevie gonna say like, you showed her the motherfucking. <laughs> Cheers to that. I'm gonna want the shit. I'm gonna pop this shit over. Oh no, man, this shit's fucking fucking throwing me oh, over. Oh shit! Boy, watch, 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 watch. She got fucking. Who is that? I <laughs> <laughs> should look like my grandma back in 1920s. So if you know, you know I'm a Chapina and I rep my roots heavily, Guatemalan. And I really wanted Cujo to try our drink, which is a uh, queso teca. We call it inditas. This is the mora flavor. It's great, and uh, you put poison in this. No, I did. <laughs> Some floating around, foggy <laughs> looking shit right Trying there. Trying to roofie you real quick, uh. but uh, <laughs> I really wanted him to try it, so I brought it, and he was like, "I'm a lightweight though. Bring, bring a chaser." So I brought yeah. um, tonic water so we could mix it. Great flavor. We're, yeah, it's looking so out, sick. Huh? I leave on Friday, and that's all I'm gonna be drinking over there. Let's cheers to music, man. Right. Yeah, and, cheers. And this is soulful before. conversation. Yes, sir. All right. So, I have something prepared for us. <laughs> so, I feel like this is a cool way of like, people getting to know Kujo. We know the music, you know? It's about to get really real. <laughs> I've seen some of these cards. It's about to get really real. Right. There's no skips. No skips? I said take the skips out. Great, throw these shits away. So, since you're the guest, go ahead. How many times do you think I'd call my ex after a breakup? Well, you're fucking me? crazy, me? so, yeah. Do I love the bitch? Or do I not really care? You love the bitch. I'm pulling that off. Yeah. Oh, I'll kick that bitch's door. Mm, love that. Yeah, that's right. Straight up. Bitch, you're my bitch. Yeah. What are you doing? Cheers. Love that. I feel like this one's going to be more for girls. Renny. Are you letting someone fly you out, all expenses paid, on the second date? 
Duh. I'm on the first. Where? To, where? <laughs> I got shit packed already. <laughs> All right, my turn. Sometimes love isn't enough. What was missing in your relationship? You said I can't skip. About to get real. I yeah. can't take a shot and skip this. Where do I start the list? Sometimes honey? love isn't enough. What was missing in your relationship? All right, yeah. She can't answer it. <laughs> All right. Damn. Cheers, guys. A su madre. What did you sacrifice for your relationship in the past? I'm going to think of a good answer for this. At times, music. And the person never, never like, seen it. You know what I mean? Because they don't, don't, don't know music. They don't get it. They don't understand it. They don't understand, they don't understand it. Sacrificing, making a hit right now. Because who knows what I'm going to come out of there with. You know, yeah. it's like gambling, you know. I think that's a big part of the reason why I'm single, if I'm honest with you. can't handle it. The whole videos, all that yeah. shit. Yeah. You gotta be like a, a very secure man to like not trip on that shit. Did you ever discuss sex with your family growing up? How would you handle these conversations in your household? Like how how would you handle these conversations in your household? You know, I was raised by my gra grandparents. I know we did not discuss, discuss sex. And I feel like when I have my kids, I feel like I'll switch that up it's gonna be really different i'll make sure to be very open because i wish that i would have had somebody to talk to you know because they're gonna come back pregnant exactly <laughs> how did your last relationship end and are you still and are you two still fucking no we're not and uh i guess the grass is greener on the other side so the person chose to pursue that i mean we'll see who wasn't in right i'm gonna tell you some hard ass shit it's a, it's a, it's a fucking lie. i'm gonna use don't you motherfucking steal this shit either you know, they said the grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, the grass might have been greener on the other side, but bitch, all you had to do was water this, this fucking grass. I'm stealing that shit. <laughs> all you had to do was water your own grass, bitch. You didn't have to hop over the fucking wall. You wouldn't even have flowers growing out that shit. Whole ass tree that had oh, coconuts. Shit, man. Flowers, <laughs> daffodils, <laughs> daisies, all types of shit. Biscuits. Hey, you got to accept it and move on, you know what I mean? Yeah. It no, I definitely did that. You know. People want to be in your life, they'll make sure they're there. You know what I mean? If it's not, it is what it is. What is the one thing you want to accomplish before the year ends? Only fans, 10K. <laughs> Probably reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. If you could snap your fingers and change one thing about yourself, what would it be? When I get really drunk, I blink a lot. <laughs> I'll be like blinking and shit. I'll be like, fuck. Hey, and the homies will be like, what's up, Blinky? I'll be like, man, fuck you. Like, I'll be having a blink attack, and I feel like I like my eyes will be Wait, on you fire. That I be like this, like. Yeah, but like I hide it. I'm like, like I don't know why I do it, but I, I don't happen for like five minutes straight. Like I'll be like, fuck. It's like a burn in my eye. Like I have to be really drunk. They'll start burning for some reason. It's really weird. I don't know if I'm keeping them open for too long. And just, I don't. I'll pay some some uh, change. That shit's embarrassing. I'm gonna call you nah, I hate that shit. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I'll be like, so blinky, oh man, fuck you. I would change that. I hate that shit. It's annoying. <laughs> What's the one thing you could do to improve your sex life? Woo! Get dick. Literally. Well, I, feel, I, I say that because I feel like you're not like a fucking foot rat bitch. Oh shit, not even trying to get at her. I just, I sense it, like she reflects herself. Like I say, I can tell you've been celibate. You can tell by the vibe. I'm no key psychic. You know why it's easy to be abstinent? Easy? I'm a heavy masturbator. Oh yeah, me too, but it's not, it's not easy for me. What depends on the toys you get? What? What? <laughs> I have had the fucking suck it up, whatever the fuck <laughs> I've had that shit. That shit is crazy. It like vibrates and spins. That shit, I've had that shit. Does it feel real? Yeah, I, it's really weird. Like, it kind of makes you bust way faster than a real pussy. I can imagine. And if you use it too much, like, real pussy doesn't. Isn't that a bad thing? Kind of. So you gotta be careful. Doesn't it ruin it for you? Kind of, yeah. I feel like, uh, who told me this shit? It was like one of, like, it was like a certain homie. I can't remember, but he was pretty much like. Like, like for the homies that whack off a lot and shit, jack off a lot, you like you you're, you're releasing your manhood too much. Like you gotta you gotta let it build up. Supposedly. And it makes it makes you like people who play sports, they're not supposed to fuck before games or even like the day of, because they don't fuck up their game. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like that's how much it's like. I don't agree. You're mad. <laughs> I'll be cool. Eighty one. Nah, but. I, I get I get what you're saying, but to, I'm just saying like you gotta let it build up. Like you can't just be busting fat nuts every day because then yeah. when you actually get some pussy, like 
your mind is already used to a certain feeling, so this other feeling is cool, but it's like, eh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you, if you don't fuck with your shit, you know what I'm saying? You let your manhood fucking up, build up, get that low testosterone going and shit, and you get some pussy, your, your brain is like, oh, shit, oh, shit, and then it, it gets some more, you know what I'm saying? What do you think about your partner discussing your sex life with their friends? I ain't got nothing to hide. I ain't gonna that shit. Be careful, bitch. No. <laughs> they might want to fuck me. Okay, see, that's what I mean. <laughs> be careful. Imagine, like, you're talking to your girls and shit. You'd be like, damn, my man just laid down the pipe. They'd be like, yeah. Next party, as soon as you go to the bathroom, that bitch gonna be uh, throwing the little slick subliminals. That's what I'm just like. Mm. And then she gonna see if you catch him or not. Mm -hmm. You got buttercup? Yeah, I do. I'm just telling me everything about you. Grumpy as fuck. Especially in the morning. Real talk. Define love. Define love. You know, I I said this once and I'm going to say it again because I've felt this way since I first experienced love. Mm -hmm. You're willing to die for that person. Like, you're willing to take a bullet for them. Yeah. That's the best That's way I could describe it. Like, if whenever I love somebody, I'm willing to take a bullet for them. For me, when you literally live for the other person, sounds like really weird but like when you live for the other person like you're living for yourself but you're also living for them like anything that you do on a daily basis has them in mind yeah and how they're gonna feel about any little thing you do yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah any any action you're doing they're on your mind someone leaves a sexy smirk emoji in Bay's comments are you going to stalk them i'm gonna dm them or like i'll comment on that i'll reply to that comment like this is my bitch fool <laughs> so like that like like or shut it down or some shit. Or I'll be like, I know, right? That's on me. Uh -uh. Like that. That's what I would say. If I was really bothered by it, I'd probably DM it. Have you ever fallen out of love and stayed in a relationship anyway? Yes. Why? Because he was a nice guy. That nigga's dick game was whack. I can hurt Oh him. my god. He was a nice guy. His name was Chad. He was a really <laughs> swell man. <laughs> I still had love for him, not in love, but I was like, I had, like, I cared about him, but I just, he was so nice, and I still got shit about it, like, when I left him, from my friends and my family. Tell him, mind your fucking business, what the fuck, I'm running game right now. It's been, like, five years, and I still hear about it from my family at times, like, I fell out of love and fell in love with music. That's why when you said that, um, you know, you have to sacrifice music, I had to sacrifice that relationship, because I really wanted to pursue music. And I don't regret it to right. this day. Oh, he just didn't want you to do music at all or what? Um, he, you know, it was always a thing. Every time I'm like, you know, I want, especially now, you know, doing podcasts with guys, mm -hmm. and, you know, collaborating with other artists that happen to be male or, you know, having to shoot a video where I was going to have a guy or a guy was going to be there or the videographer was a guy. I'm like, dude, I'm sick and tired of arguing over this shit. And that made me fall out of love slowly and... Again, he was a really nice guy, so I had love for him. But I don't regret leaving because I wouldn't be sitting here interviewing Kujo the Savage if I would have stayed. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. This was years ago, like four years ago. So four or five years ago. Of course, I ended up getting into a relationship after with an artist. So I figured it would, you know, work out. And yeah, he understood the artist part, but just not the unconditional love part so you can't get it all you know you can't, can't get the best of both worlds and say you, Hannah Montana motherfucker you, <laughs> you, know you dead ass can't butt injections yes or no no what about other cosmetic plastic surgeries I mean I don't hate on them but if I had the the real like choice no don't jiggle like a real one I don't feel like a real one either us guys are getting over that shit already. Really? Because all these bitches are getting them. <laughs> How did you process your last breakup? I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. <laughs> you can't answer it? I can't. Well, no skips. She skipped twice. I answered everything. That's bomb. You have it with the tonic, huh? Ooh, that shit is uh, yeah. I don't care if she roofies me, roofies me now. That shit, this shit is bomb. <laughs> How did I process my last breakup? Oh, nah. Damn, this shit made me want to answer. Put the pressure it. on her. Nah, cause you're like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Monogamous dating or roster vibes? That's hard because it's like, 
do I really care about the person that I'm being monogamous with? So it depends on the person. It person. depends on how much I care about the person I'm be, being monogamous with at the moment. Like, if I'm, if I'm fucking with you, like, I'll fuck with you and I'll, and I'll really try to, like, fuck with you, just you, right? But if there's no title, I'm still single. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might fuck with you, like, 90% of the time, and I'm still single. I'm still exploring options. Like, don't get that shit fucked up. You know what I mean? But once I actually put a title on it, I have to care about you. Like, or else I wouldn't put myself in that position to put a title on it. If there's someone that I really, really care about, and I really, I really like her, but I'm just maybe not sure yet, so I'm not going to put a title on it. Like, but once I do, I'm sure. And then I'm, I'm I, you know, I like to think I'm loyal, but, you know what I'm saying? This music shit is... is from a woman's point of view, it's like, you probably did, you probably, did. you know, you probably did, you probably that, you probably that. Probably did. <laughs> I actually have a lot of self control, and I take pride in that shit. I love telling a bitch no. That's like a power th power trip for me. I'm weird, fool. Like I, that's a power trip for me. Like I like telling a bitch nope. When was the last time that you had mind blowing sex? Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Sound like she's getting fucked right now. Fuck. 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 I'm taking another shot because he's going to know who he is if I say the day. Parenting is hard. What should your parents have taught you when you were younger? About credit. Fucking thanks, mom. My shit's <laughs> fucked up. I barely learned about that shit like a couple years ago how to like build that shit. I didn't even, I didn't even think that shit mattered like that. So I was like fucking 24. Like, holy oh, shit. That's how you get places and shit like that. You know, that's how you get a car and place and shit. So I'm, I'm fucking catching up on that. But I wish I would've learned about credit. Like, I wish I would've learned about, like, all that. We reached the end of this episode. Yeah! I hope y'all had fun. Because this was fucking fun for me. What? Well, cheers to that. Got a good podcast. Yeah. Hey, comment so you can see it again. Yeah. Part two, my brother. We can do part two. Let me know if I should make her a co-host. Because I do need a girl co-host. I have a guy. I have. It's gonna be me, another homie. But I do need a girl co-host. I'm searching for one. Let me know if she's the one. Better than no jumper. Better. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Thank I'm you about guys. Pull some pool real quick. Thank you. <laughs> We're about to play some pool. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, he's about to be my ass because I suck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that. Again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Kujo the Savage. Kujo the Savage, K U J O underscore the Savage on Instagram. And I'll see you guys next episode. Peace out. That was a good one. They're gonna fucking love that shit.